growing up, Melissa always knew she had been adopted. Her parents had always been open about this fact. However, Melissa wasn't aware of her tragic story as an abortion survivor. This life-changing realization happened during a trying time for the Cross family. When did you find out about the abortion piece of your life? I found out when I was about 14 years old. I was in the eighth grade, and what had actually happened was my older sister became pregnant as a high school student. And I didn't know it at the time, but she was considering having an abortion. And so our parents told her about my survival in the hopes that she would choose life for her child. We were fighting, as usual, as a couple of teenage girls can do. And in the middle of this argument that we were having that night, she just, she spun around in the middle of the argument and she shouted at me and she said, at least my parents wanted me. And I was 14 and, of course, very witty. And so I was ready to spin around and say something back to her. And when I spun around to say something, her face just fell. And that was very uncharacteristic of her because she liked to fight with me. And so I became worried. And she started off, and we had this kind of conversation back and forth for a while. She said, you don't know, do you? And so we bantered a little bit back and forth. Of course I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. And finally she just said, wait up for mom tonight and you'll see. And I did, very anxiously. And so when mom came home that night, I told her about the fight that we had had. And just like my sister's face fell, so did my mom's. And I knew that something major was gonna happen, but I never in a million years could have imagined that this was the awful truth. So we, we talked about it a lot. I was very honest, very open with her about everything because this is her life. She has a right to know. And um, so it was um, pretty traumatic that we um, had good talks. What was your reaction to the truth? I was really, really angry. To know that I was adopted was always such a beautiful thing. And I always felt so important. And then to find out that someone thought they needed to end my life that they couldn't just choose adoption for me. I was so angry by that, and really probably more hurt than anything. Well, that's baggage that not your average 14-year-old has to carry. Yeah. So how did you handle that? My family was always so supportive of me. I was getting confirmed that year, and so my church was really a great outlet for me. My school was really supportive. I was able to give speeches, I went to speech contests and spoke about abortion. You know, it was something that people really didn't um, fault me for and didn't have me be quiet about. I certainly, being 14 years old, was really, really cautious about who I told. And really, up until about the time I was 30, I was still very, very careful about who I told because I was embarrassed. I was really embarrassed for a long time, and I was ashamed. And I did feel guilty for surviving when I know that tens of millions of children haven't been that, that lucky. How has that shaped her life to know that she was aborted but survived? Into a fabulous young lady that she is right now, very strong. Do you think it gave her that strong will and determination that you know that she has now? From the day she was born, yes. That's why her will to live was. There was a purpose for why she was going to do this and share what she has to offer. Have you ever seen her struggle with the reality of how she was conceived? Yes. How so? Yes. Because I think she questions sometimes um, why she is here. Um, she knows now that there is a purpose of why she is here. So when did the guilt go away and the shame, the embarrassment? You know, it was a process. I can't ever say that there was one particular point in time that it all went away. I can, I can tell you that the anger subsided really quickly. What do you attribute that to? Faith. And knowing that I'm not their judge or jury. And that we all make mistakes as human beings, some greater than others. But they all have repercussions. And I, I've never met a woman who, who wanted that abortion and said, I want to end my child's life. You know, it's about 
I need to take care of what I see as a problem. I try, I got to make this go away. I need to be able to move on with my life. I've never heard someone say, I really want to kill my child. I just, I believe in my heart that that isn't something ever that my biological mother could have wanted. Completely changed my world. Because even at the time, in my heart I knew I was pro-life. In my head I was struggling because I was very much a young little budding feminist. And I really felt like women should have a choice about their bodies. And so to suddenly realize what my reality was, it completely changed my world forever because it was never about someone's choice anymore. It's about somebody's right to life. And for me as a woman, I would have never had life if someone else's choice would have been successful. It was very difficult for me to grapple with the gruesomeness of my life and still to this day I have a hard time with it. I was at the March for Life in Ottawa a couple of months ago and we marched past the abortion clinic up there and they had of course very well-meaning people putting the posters up of aborted babies. I have a hard time with those pictures. And I know that some people believe that that is what it takes to change people's hearts and minds about abortion, but for somebody like me, it hits far too close to home. Well, you've lived the pictures. Yeah, that's me staring back at me. Well, we hear a lot, even today in the media, that uh, an unborn baby, when they're aborted, is nothing more than a blob of tissue. And, and you really put that myth to bed by the fact that you've survived. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's it's almost heartbreaking for me when I run into women who are post-abortive, like my own biological mother, and they see me. And actually, I just got an email from a woman a couple of weeks ago who said, I saw you on TV and I can't stop crying. Because they did. They told me exactly that piece that that child was just a blob of tissue and I'm looking at you and I know it's not true. And that's just heartbreaking that people have to live their lives having made that choice after someone has told them that lie. So abortion really doesn't liberate women, does it? Absolutely not. I really truly believe that my biological parents have been given a gift that we know tens of millions of other parents haven't been given. Their child lived when we know all of those other parents out there are hurting because they know their child didn't live. Come. After several years of healing, Melissa Oden was finally able to grapple with her tragic past as an abortion survivor. Then during her freshman year of college, Melissa decided to begin the lengthy process of searching for her birth parents. After nearly 12 years, she was able to locate her father in May of 2007. To Melissa's surprise, she discovered her biological father was living in the very same city. I prayed about it for a couple of months because here I had been trying to have this happen for so long and then to finally have it dropped in your lap, I really didn't know what to do and I didn't want to make any mistakes. And so I ended up sending him a letter that summer and I just let him know that I was alive and well, that I knew about the attempt to end my life and that I'd forgiven him a long time ago and that here I was living in the same very same city that he was if he ever wanted to contact me and have a relationship. And did you hear from him? I never did. And that was incredibly difficult. All those months went by and, you know, days turned into weeks, turned into months, and I had kind of given up hope of ever hearing from him. And um, one night I Googled his name, something came up from our local newspaper, and it was actually his obituary. He had passed away right around the anniversary of Roe versus Wade. That's not a coincidence. Now you reached out to his parents, is that right? That was not an easy decision for me to make, but I wanted to hopefully bring them some peace to know that even though they had lost my father, that a piece of him was still alive and well in this world. But what I didn't know is that while I went kind of searching for them, they came searching for me. When my father passed away, they went to his office to clean out his desk and gather his belongings. And when they cleaned out his desk, they found the letter that I had wrote him. It was tucked in his top desk drawer. 
and that means a lot to me. Because all those months, I had always wondered if he ever received the letter, and if he ever received the letter, if he believed that I was really his daughter, and if he believed that I was his daughter, if he was ever going to do anything about it. And so his family really believed that that was a big sign, that he knew, and that he was going to do something about it someday. And so I think his passing was really that way to bridge the gap and unite me with his family. So now do you have a relationship with his family? Yeah, members of the family actually. I met my great aunt and uh, she came for our daughter's first birthday party and her second birthday party. And she's gotten to know my family, which is really great. After I met my great aunt, I met my grandfather for the first time and that was in June of 2008. He actually came knocking on our door. Well, when you talk about these family members, your face lights up. So obviously, it's important to you that you know them. Absolutely. You know, so I've met my great aunt. I've met my grandfather. He comes over all the time. I always have to joke, he comes over really early on Saturday mornings when I'm not prepared. But um, that's a gift. You know, that's, that's not a hindrance. That's a gift to have a grandfather showing up on your doorstep on a Saturday morning because he wants to see you so badly. And he'll be the first person to tell you after my father passed away, he really didn't feel like he had anything to live for. And now he has Olivia and I. Although Melissa's search for her father eventually had a positive outcome, the same isn't true for finding her birth mother. Unable to locate her mother, Melissa instead reached out to her maternal grandparents but the response she received wasn't the one she was hoping for. I had just said, you know, I'm not sure where my mother is, but I would just ask that you pass along this message to her so she knows that I'm alive and well and here I am waiting. And I really never expected to hear back from them. And I heard back within days from my grandfather. What did he say? In the letter he let me know that obviously he knew by my letter that my live birth was not her intention that day when she entered the hospital. He let me know that um, obviously after the abortion my parents were no longer together and that my mother had went on to marry someone else. She had two other daughters after me and that in recent years they no longer had a relationship with my mother and so they wouldn't be passing along my message. Yeah, that was hard. Did you struggle with any feelings toward the biological mother? At first, maybe a little of how she could do this because I wanted a child so badly and I couldn't have one. And yet I, it was hard for me to understand why she wanted to abort the child instead of just putting her up for adoption, you know, by carrying her full term. But then as it went on, as the years went on, I wanted to thank her for letting me be a part of her life. If you could speak to her now, what would you say to her? That she missed out on so much. Of, a, of an awesome child, of a young lady, and um, what she has become. Now, if you could talk to your biological mother and you were f sitting face to face with her, what would you say to her? That I'm sorry. That I'm sorry that she felt like that was the only choice she had to make. That I'm sorry that she's had to live her life full of pain and regret and secrets that I forgave for a long time ago. And that I hope she's forgiven herself. In the midst of traveling around the country and sharing her story, Melissa Oden has found time to start a family. She and Ryan, her husband of five years, are busy raising Olivia, their two-year-old daughter. Melissa knows her history as an abortion survivor will always have an impact on her family. She's living proof abortion has a generational impact. 
tell me about your life now. Never been better. It really hasn't, you know. I think I struggled for many, many years with being a survivor and what that meant to me and my life. And, you know, I always felt like I've been given so much. Maybe someday it's all just going to end. And could it ever be any better than what it's been? And it does. It keeps getting better every single day. My husband and I had our first child on April 26th of 2008 at the very same hospital where my life was supposed to end. Really? Again, not a coincidence. I used to drive past that hospital and literally grip the wheel of my car just full of anguish. And now I drive past that hospital and smile because it holds the most beautiful memories of our life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How do you think this will impact Olivia's life? I want her to know that this is who she is and we need to be proud of who we are and the fact that we were given this incredible opportunity at life and to minister to other people. You know, everybody can learn from our lives. This is the true reality of abortion, that my husband would have never had a wife and we never would have had that beautiful child that we have and my adoptive parents never would have had a child. And now my biological family never would have had the opportunity to know me. You know, this is what abortion really looks like. I've started this foundation called For Olivia's Sake to help educate the world about the fact that Olivia deserved life just as much as I did. And so that's what For Olivia's Sake is about, is to really put a face to abortion and give people an opportunity to say that they hurt too and help them find ways to heal. Well, and 